New Orleans Mardi Gras Indian culture dates back more than two centuries and for more than five decades, one man helped preserve and defend those traditions. And you could say the big chief Tutu Montana even died doing so in 2005. Channel 4 photojournalist Steve Wolfram talked to Montana's son who's preserving his father's legacy in a very real way. <laughs> This was my father's uh, best suit, not best suit uh, aesthetically, but it meant more to him because he had worn it the, more than any other suit that he had ever made. The same suit is the statue that's in Congo Square. I am the son of Big Chief Allison Tootie Montana. Whatever I've ever done with these hands and with my mind as it relates to the culture, I look at it as me being an extension of him. And we all about we all all My daddy always incorporated lace work in his work. You know, this is like beyond the call. It's enough just doing these pieces here, but he would sit down and put all these pearls on wire. I mean, he said, Daryl, you know how I got to be who I am? He said, because I mass every year. And every year I'm, 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 I try to be pretty. I am the, the way the old Indian did, the way my dad did it. You make the suit, you wear it, it's carnival, you wear it St. Joe's, but after that it's over with. Nowadays everybody trying to, everybody trying to make money. I had a trade, and that's what I depend on for my, for my money. My daddy was a wire ladderer. And mostly all the elaborate buildings in the city, his work is there. In fact, the logo for the La Pavillon Hotel on the front of the hotel, that's my daddy's work. Jack's Brewery, all of that beautiful artwork on the outside of the building, that's my daddy's work. The Audubon Tea Room, the, the dome ceiling and all, that's my daddy's work. In fact, he incorporated his trade into his suits. So he was the one that started this three-dimensional stuff. I remember we had been meeting, planning. We were meeting in the uptown area of the city. I was working a summer camp across the river. And I told one of my coworkers I was rushing to hurry up and get off so I can go home and take a bath to make it to the city council chamber when the situation happened. And I said to my coworker, I said, we're going to make history today. Never thought. Never thought. It was an evening for unity for the Mardi Gras Indians to voice their concerns in front of the city council and the New Orleans police. Big Chief Allison Tootie Montana, the spiritual leader of the Mardi Gras Indians for 52 years, spoke of his early days and confrontations with police. Don't look at them. Just, they was trying to block the whole street, but they didn't have enough of them. I said, just whatever Oatman you can get through, go ahead on through. And every year they'd be there. I had that problem. Montana was composed as he spoke. What would become his last words? Go ahead, Chief. Take your time. That was huge. That was purely civil rights moment, you know, um, to come up against so much uh, that so many people had fought for in the streets. You know, we think of... Um, other issues when it comes to civil rights, but being able to just walk down the street and celebrate your own within your own community, unfortunately, you know, it was his demise in the in the end. But uh, it just goes to show how strong a person it took. This is a suit I did uh, in 2007, and I did a replica of a copy of a picture of my father. And this, I took, this is him in his last suit. In fact, if you look at this here, this is a replica of the other suit that I just showed you. That's my work. And I had it where the arms moved and everything. So it was like, this is the first suit I made after my father's death. You could definitely feel a change in the city and a change in the neighborhoods around the whole culture. It's almost like now we're welcome with, you know, when they see Indians or even baby dolls or skulls or, you know, everything is opened up for us. He really did a remarkable thing and he changed, he changed the culture and just flung the doors open, you know. So people need to see his work. They need to know his legacy, his history, all the things he's done 
around the city. You know, just the depth of it. It's not just in the suit, the humanness of it. I feel very proud to, to be his son. While carrying on such a beautiful legacy, yeah. Daryl Montana continues the tradition as chief of the Yellow Pocahontas Indian tribe. Yeah, his goal is to find funding for a space to display his father's Indian suits on a more permanent basis, and that would be wonderful. It really would. There is no other culture like this on the face of the earth. Yeah, it's, it's just, beautiful. It's just so special.